Hello my friends, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about BeamNG Career Mode. So Career Mode is not something new, it has already been in the game for quite a long time and it has been playable before also by just ramming the Career Mode button. But since shortly, uh, since the last update, um, the Career Mode has become accessible and yeah, well, I needed to try it out. A career mode is included in a lot of driving games out there, but most of the time uh, they are very repetitive or simply not worth playing. The career mode in BeamNG tries to be a bit refreshing. You start out doing a tutorial and after this you are given a budget and the ability to buy your first car. With this first car you can start a career in one or more of four different branches that are available to play and progress. The laborer branch is the branch I have most progressed in so far. A task here is cargo delivery, but it's not that straightforward as it sounds. The cargo varies in size and are a bunch of different car parts that can be picked up and delivered from various addresses in town and it is really up to you to plan the delivery as efficient as possible. On top of this, you will need to drive carefully because your insured cars may need some repairs and those can set you back quite an amount of currency and time. Repairs can last up to 10 minutes. Also, there are speed cameras and those can cost you quite a lot too if not careful. Depending on the vehicle you have, you can carry more cargo. There is a very impressive fleet of vehicles already available standard in the game ranging from small coupés to big rigs. Car jockey is another type of task and here you can drive and deliver cars from long one location to another. It's a very effective way to test the different cars and make a pick for the next car you want to own. You can earn decent money and experience with these tasks and it's particularly fun and challenging to change from uh, an electric SUV to a manual shifting sedan that burns virtual diesel. The entire laborer branch is made in such a way that you don't lose too much time not earning experience or currency. When you pick up goods and deliver them, most of the times at your destination there will be other packages to load up and deliver. This causes for a very fluent grinding session. Uh, the same goes for the delivery of vehicles. You can just grab another vehicle at the destination or catch a cab to a garage that has a few deliveries to be done. Both a taxi task and towing task are on a coming soon status. I think these two will be a very nice addition and I'm in particularly interested in how they will implement the taxi one. I have been dreaming about using a white Peugeot uh, 405 to drive around uh, ever since I played Taxi Simulator. Of course, uh, for the people that say, oh yeah, but driving around packages, that's not something for me. There are also other ways to uh, earn some money and, uh, and a progress in your career. The motorsports branch features apex racing and drifting at the moment. I found the apex racing quite challenging. If you are used to driving GT cars or Formula 1 cars, driving an Ibishu Corvette with stock brakes and a 0 to 100 in 10.7 seconds can be very challenging. The drifting task I have not tested before, but knowing BeamNG is a very popular game when it comes to drifting, I'm sure there will be a lot of fans for this type of task too. Rock crawling is also a favorite of many BeamNG drivers and this is also implemented as ways to progress. I did not try it in career yet, but I can also appreciate this discipline from time to time. A fourth task is a legacy racing and will be coming soon. In the specialized branch there are law enforcement missions, again a very popular type of driving and fantastic that it is included in the career mode. You can perfect your different law enforcement techniques. The task I played in this was uh, making another car stop and hold them in place for 5 seconds without causing too much damage to the provided cop car. Those who have a bit of experience in this will know how to go around and get this done. I myself needed a few tries but finally got the car turned and stopped. You can also use custom police cars which is an extra bonus. It are all scenarios so no free roam and roleplay possibility for this type of tasks yet. It's the only branch to have just one category of tasks but there are uh, paramedics, private security and stunt driver coming soon. Again here, three very different options to keep things a bit fresh. The last set of tasks would be the adventure mode and this is where the unclassified tasks will be dropped. Here there are mini games like playing bowling with your car. 
there are also some parking techniques and criminal tasks. The latter I have not played yet, but I'm sure it will be interesting too. Coming soon here are the Crash Derbies, which makes me dream again of the glorious times I had in the Destruction Derby game. And the last section here is Havoc Mode, which will probably be some sort of Burnout 3 takedown clone, or at least that is what I would hope it to be. I believe this is one, if not the most impressive career mode I have ever seen in a driving simulation game. And if this is not already enough, there are other aspects that are also available to make the entire career more interesting. There is the tuning aspect, which will allow you to replace certain parts with other performance parts. If you want to drive your Ibishu without doors and hood, no problem, just take them off. Adding a spoiler and body kit also belongs to the possibilities in this game. While tuning of the car setting is also possible, I know a bit too little of cars to really indulge in it, but I need to mention it as it is a very important and well worked out part of this game too. When it comes to the modding community, BeamNG is really having to. I mean, the creators, they didn't restrict the game in any way to try to stop mods. They actually, uh, uh, they, they encourage you to, to, to make, uh, create mods for it. And the good thing is for career mode that, for example, if you download a car, which is not in the game, that you can also use this mod in the career mode. This is something which is really special too. And well, uh, kudos to the developers that they that they are doing stuff like that. So are there any negative things about it? Yes, of course there are, like with any game. Um, I do think that it lacks a bit of ambience. So when I played Taxi Simulator uh, yeah, recently, um, what I liked about it is that, that it was really, uh, it was a real city and there were people running around and a lot, a lot of cars. The integration of people and decent AI traffic is not a given, of course, both from a programming point of view and for the hardware needed to make it work. Another thing would be a day and night cycle. While it is possible to set darkness in BeamNG, uh, in the career mode it is not implemented yet. Certainly this would be an asset for the immersion part. Of course, all these extras would ask for more heavy resources and that brings me to the next point. BeamNG is a game that consumes a lot of RAM and it's the first game that made my computer really struggle. With 16 gigabytes of RAM, I still get a message that I'm running out of it. Now this isn't surprising really, if you objectively look at the complexity of the game, yeah, but it's still something that uh, people might struggle with. Another thing that you need to take into account when you play the career mode, there is simply a lot, a lot, a lot of buttons that you need to mop. So you can get out of your car, for example, and you can walk around and you can use a computer. And well, there are simply so many things that you need to mop. Um, and, and that makes it really difficult to just play with a steering wheel. You will need to have a, your keyboard, keyboard with you. Uh, or um, um, uh, a stream deck or something and, and, and that's that's a bit of a lesser point. It is also the reason why I chose for example to, to play with it in with the Kama C12 and not the Logitech G Pro. Logitech G Pro is a fantastic steering wheel and um, it has the true force so BeamNG supports true force and this is really fun but the steering wheel just didn't allow me to mop all the actions that I wanted. And that is why I went with the C12, because the C12 just has this abundance of, of uh, mapping possibilities that Logitech simply doesn't have. As a conclusion, BeamNG and its recently expanded career mode is certainly a game you would like to have in your library if you don't just settle for the racing aspect in driving games. The scope of different driving simulations represented in BeamNG is absolutely impressive and I honestly think it can call itself the ultimate driving simulator. The added career mode is the chocolate sauce that goes over the banana split. It just combines all the elements and creates a very fun, fluent and fresh environment for us drivers. And the best part of it, you are not bound to a monthly subscription, you pay 24 and a half euro at this moment and a lot of the mods are offered to you for free by the amazing BeamNG community. An absolute bargain. Mind you that this is early access and that BeamNG Drive has been in this stage since 2015. But don't let that status fool you. You get a very expanded package already that outshines many other fully released driving simulators out there. 
A last thing to add, if there is interest in seeing me make some videos about certain mods in BeamNG, leave me a comment with uh, what type of mod you would love to see. If you create mods and want to have me test it and feature it in a video, also just drop me a comment. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had something from this video. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more videos and I will see you all next one. Bye bye.